Now, we're joined by Nicola Thorpe and Christine Hamilton to discuss, to discuss today's top stories. Good morning to you both. Morning. morning. How are you? OK, thanks. <laughs> um, so, well, since, since we've been on air, obviously, Boris has... There's been various updates and announcements. Which, let, let, let's start, because this has all happened whilst we've been on air. Um, first of all, with Back to Work. In England, from today, we are making clear that anybody may use public transport, while, of course, encouraging people to consider alternative means of transport where they are available. From the 1st of August, we will update our advice on going to work. Whatever employers decide, they should consult closely with their employees and only ask people to return to their place of work if it is safe. Every time Boris comes to a plinth, you feel like you're bracing yourself, um, I, don't yeah, you, for you, what you, he's you about really to say do. and how it might affect you. Back to work, um, Nicola and Christine, that will affect lots of people and how they go about it. But uh, once again, not for the first time, I not mean, so clear. Yeah. Christine, what do you think? It, well, I welcome the fact that he's used the word discretion. He's going to give employers a bit more discretion because I think that is important. People should be much more than we have been hitherto allowed to make our own assessment of the risk to us and to our friends and family. So I welcome that. Um, you know, it's a question of balance. You, obviously, the, the government is responsible primarily for keeping people safe. That's the first thing. But you've got to get the confidence back so that people are going out, spending, et cetera, et cetera. Otherwise, the economy will go down the pan and mm. we'll lose far more people through other reasons for death. So I welcome that and I welcome the discretion. And I also welcome um, uh, that he's delegating powers to local authorities a bit more so that local areas can make their own decisions. So, so far, that to me is a positive move. And I love his motto, by the way. He said, we're hoping for the best, but preparing for the worst. Yeah. Which actually quite a good motto in life, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Absolutely that. Uh, Nicola, that Nicola, Nicola it, it, seems, it seems a tad grey again. There's a, there was some mixed messaging <laughs> yet again at the start by saying everyone can now use public transport, not just for essential work, but also don't where possible. Yeah, I mean, this is classic Boris, isn't it? He sets a roadmap to get people back to work whilst also preparing for the second wave. And I think it was really telling that he wasn't there with the chief scientific advisers today. Patrick Vallance notably saying there was no reason to change the guidance. And Boris saying, we take scientific advice very seriously, but in the end, decisions are taken by elected politicians and we have to weigh the advice that we get. For me, I don't feel particularly filled with confidence, but as Christine said, it is good that employers can use discretion, but unfortunately, when it comes to employer discretion, it's often the employees who lose out. Um, the local well, count... Sorry, Christine, go on. No, I was just going to say, Boris did make it clear that they should be done in consultation with employees. Now, of course, whether that happens in individual work that. remains to be seen. Okay. Mm. It, it, they've not set out a guide. Well, they've not set out who will be actually monitoring that. You know, are there going to be kind of COVID police going around different workplaces checking that they're safe and secure? Or are you going to have a repeat of what happened in Leicester, for example, in the mm -hmm. Boohoo um, sweatshop factory? Well, you, you've got to hope that the now that we've been in the situation for for a little while, and the and the, the companies, the, the work companies, because the emphasis is on them as opposed to the individual, yeah. that they will actually make the right decision. And I guess you just have to hope that everybody will make the right decision for their for their workforce. Um, uh, he talked about the NHS, and he's uh, pledging some more money to the NHS. Let's get some of that clip from Boris Johnson now as well. Today, I can confirm that we're providing an additional. Three billion pounds of funding to the NHS in England to get ready for winter. Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland will also receive additional funds. This will allow the NHS to continue to use the extra hospital capacity acquired from the independent sector and also to maintain the Nightingale hospitals until the end of March. What do we think? about that one, uh, Nicola, because um, he hasn't necessarily made any any pledges to the actual NHS, NHS workers, workers. But it's good to have more Not money work. into the NHS, but actually a lot of us will appreciate now that it's the individuals who deserve some of that money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, three billion to, to prepare the NHS for a second wave is great. Mm -hmm. um, but as you said, I'd, I'd much rather see him improving the rights of nurses, particularly nurses who've 
uh, immigrated over here uh, to join the NHS and are still paying parking tickets, for example. Oh, to, it's to, just to outrageous. To park. So, like, I would rather see them than change some policy over that. Um, but, yeah, it's... Um, We'll, we'll see what happens come the so-called second wave, but it, it certainly is a very encouraging pledge. Like, but like you say, it's just how they actually carry that out. OK, um, let's move things on to um, Shemima Begum, the um, former uh, London schoolgirl who, who <laughs> went over to Syria and, uh, and joined with the so-called Islamic State. And, of course, Christine, the Court of Appeal yesterday... Um, overturning the Home Office's decision from last year and saying that she should be able to come back to the UK to fight for her UK citizenship? Well, I don't agree at all. I mean, this woman is a, an unrepentant supporter of terrorist barbarity, and she turned her back on everything that we believe in in this country, all our Christian values, our, our standards, etc. She turned her back on that. She's made herself into an enemy of this country, and by all accounts, I know she was only 15 when she went there, but she threw herself into it enthusiastically. She said that the sight of severed heads in a dustbin just made her feel stronger, and it didn't matter because they were the enemies of Islam. Well, we are all, according to her, the enemies of Islam. And I just feel she's made herself an enemy of the UK, and frankly, I don't want her back. They say that she's not able to appeal because, from the refugee camp because she doesn't have the facilities. Well, she could, that could be arranged. So, you know, Zoom, Skype, et cetera, et cetera. I just don't think it's necessary. And I certainly don't think, because this will all be paid for, she'll be on legal aid, the long-suffering British taxpayer will pay for it all. So, no, I'm dead against that. I Nic think the Nicola, original decision... Nicola, yeah, held. Nicola you, you very much disagree with that, don't you? Do you think it was right to remove her citizenship in the first place? No, I don't believe it was right to remove her citizenship. She was a child when she was groomed and encouraged to, to, to go over to, um, to be an ISIS bride. She didn't go over to fight. There has been no evidence that she took part in terrorist activity other than anecdotal stories that have come from a Syrian refugee camp. Now, the authority said in a select committee a couple of years, I believe, after the three girls, two who are now sadly no longer with us, um, they said in a... a select committee that if the girls returned to the UK, they would not face any criminal charges or any terrorist charges. She has a human right to be represented by a state. She is a British citizen. She made terrible choices, but she was a child. She was 15 years old. And whatever you think about those decisions, she could not consent. She couldn't consent to having sex. Why are we assuming that she could consent to having men, predatory men, target her online and take her over to be a bride. She's lost three children, one of whom died after the British... We're going to have to wrap you up there. I'm sorry, ladies. I'm sorry. We'll have to see how that plays out. Thank you very much.